Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of my 909 kick build and in this episode I will try to explain the different building blocks of the 909 bass drum. We have a lot to cover today so let's jump in and get started right away. The logical place to start is to have a look at the block diagram of the bass drum in the Roland TR909 service manual. On the left side we have the noise generator that we have covered in the previous episode. And we also have the trig and accent inputs connected to this strange circle with a cross in the middle. This is the symbol of an RF mixer. And you might think, ah, a mixer, I know how that works. It's just adding signals together. But in the wonderful world of the black magic that is called RF, a mixer actually multiplies instead of adding. So this block should be thought of as a variable gain block or a VCA. The end product is two trigger signals where the amplitude varies with the accent level. Okay, before we continue, I think it's a good idea to talk a little about the anatomy of a bass drum sound. It basically consists of three parts. The click or front that defines the attack of the kick. The front is built up by high frequencies, transients, noise or a combination of those. This is implemented in the lower part of the block diagram controlled by envelope generator 2 and the attack knob on the front panel. The second and third parts are the body and the tail, where the body gives the punch of the kick and the tail carries the tone and the lower frequencies of the kick sound. This is normally implemented as a sine tone that rapidly drops in pitch and amplitude. The upper part of the block diagram takes care of this, where envelope 3 defines the CV for the pitch drop and envelope 1 controls the decay in the output level. All right, I think we are ready to have a closer look at the schematic diagram and see if we can figure out where the different building blocks are located in the design. Let's start at the left side and since I already talked about the noise generator, I will jump directly into the trig circuit. The trig signal is connected to transistors Q1 and Q2 where the output of Q2 is slightly delayed. This basically orchestrates the timing between the front and the back of the kick sound that I mentioned before. These two trig signals are then routed through transistors Q3, Q4 and Q5. That's our multiplier that controls the envelope generators 1 and 2. Next we have the envelope generator 3 and the CV generator that controls the pitch of the VCO. Envelope 3 is triggered by the delayed trigger signals through diode D7. The VCO is a bog standard triangle and square wave oscillator consisting of an integrator and a comparator in the feedback path. This is more or less the same circuit that I use in my voltage control LFO, by the way. The VCO is then followed by a triangle to sine wave shaper, which is just a resistor and two diodes. It's not a perfect sine wave shaper technically, but it works absolutely fine for this application. The envelope generator 1 is a simple RC network where the charging is timed using a biasing network and the discharge is controlled by the decay pot. The VCA that is connected to the envelope 1 is just the NPN transistor operating in linear range and the output is routed to a summing bus leading to the output amplifier. But let's go back to the VCO and talk about a feature that is not covered in the block diagram which is the oscillator reset or sync. In order to glue together the transient in the beginning of the kick sound with the body of the sound, the oscillator needs to be in sync with the trigger input. This is done by capacitor C1 and transistor Q7 that generates a short pulse that is fed into transistor Q11. Q11 will momentarily short circuit the timing capacitor C14 in the integrator part of the oscillator. The comparator is held in a defined state using diode D12 at the same time. This ensures that the oscillator will always start at the same phase when the kick is triggered. Next we have the low pass filter that shapes the frequency response of the noise generator a bit. The level is also adjusted because the output of the noise generator is way too loud. The pulse generator is my favorite part of the design. It takes the input trigger signal and shapes it into a complex pulse that is mixed together with the noise and this forms the front of the kick sound. The attack knob controls how much of this signal that is sent to the VCA. The envelope generator 2 is basically a fixed envelope where the output level is controlled by the accent input and it controls the VCA for the front part of the kick sound. The VCA itself is a single transistor Q6 that is also connected to the same summing node as the other one. 
And this leads us to the final stage in the signal path, which is an inverting op-amp that acts as a buffer for the output, where the level pot controls the amplification. And that's it. All right, that was a lot of theory and talking by me. If you are still with me, I hope that I have explained the basic function of the bass drum, and you have found this episode interesting. In the next episode, I will go through with my design with a couple of small adaptions that I have made, and I will showcase the finished module. Thank you for watching, and I see you soon again. Goodbye for now.